Good morning, everybody. Thank you very much first for AGU organization for having uh, invited us uh, to give uh, some talk about uh, the marketplace uh, issues uh, that we are facing in uh, our business activity. So we are, uh, I will first describe a little bit who we are. We are a manufacturer of equipment, and I will describe that in the first part. Then uh, I will describe the, what are the applications which our customers are mostly using uh, of, uh, for our equipment. Then who are our customers? Uh, what skill do they need to make the geophysical work, both in the field and uh, in the interpretation phase? Then what could be improvements according to our feelings on both instrumentation, software, methodology, and training? So who are we? We are a company located in France. We are designing, manufacturing, selling geophysical equipment. We are selling them all around the world. Last, in 2011, we sold in 52 countries around the world. We are 21 people uh, shared uh, both equally between the research and development, the production, and the sales staff. Here are some pictures. I will come back later on on the various countries where we are selling our equipment. The range of instruments which we are uh, working with is uh, resistivity sounding, resistivity profiling, that's also called imaging, then uh, induced polarization, uh, for basically for mining. Magnetic resonance is purely dedicated to groundwater investigations and electromagnetic profiling in both groundwater and mining. Just to remind you, resistivity imaging, you probably know about uh, the fact that we transmit current, we measure potential, we switch electrodes to save time, and we draw some sections with uh, topography and with the depths, with the colors representing the values of resistivity. The interest of uh, new equipment is that they acquire a lot of data thanks to the switching process. Can be 2D imaging by defining sequence of readings along a profile, or also 3D uh, by using several sets of 2D lines and also combining uh, transmitting, uh, transmission and reception on various lines, which can be parallel or perpendicular. Our equipment can be delivered with a certain number of electrodes, 48 to 120 or even more, uh, depending on the spacing. You know that in resistivity imaging, you have to define the depths you want to investigate and then the lateral resolution. You always have to find some geometry compatible with those two parameters. Then in induced polarization, we are working basically in the time domain, that is to say we charge uh, terrain and then we measure the discharge of the IPDK curve linked to mostly sulfide particles, sometimes to clay. We can also use various lines for 3D investigations where we measure the potential on various parallel lines or also in some perpendicular lines. The transmitters can need more power than in the resistivity because we are measuring small parameters and we have transmitters up to 10 kilowatt with 3000 volts maximum output voltage and receivers with 10 simultaneous channels. Then for the magnetic resonance, it's a method which is purely dedicated to uh, hydrogen detection, that to say groundwater, where we set up a loop on the surface of the ground, we energize by a pulse at a given frequency, and we measure the signal coming from the hydrogen protons back to the same loop. The, so we measure the um, amplitude just after the current is switched off, which uh, gives us an indication on the water content, and then we measure the time decay, the time constant of the decay, which is related to the permeability. That's the equipment in a one-channel version. We also have multi-channel versions. Uh, electromagnetic system is a frequency domain electromagnetic, multi-spacing, multi-frequency, where we have a transmitter uh, which is carried out, which is transported by uh, an operator and then a receiver at a certain distance, which is called the spacing, with a cable between the transmitter and the receiver. We change the frequency and we can modify uh, the frequency. Uh, so we change the length of the cable, sorry, and we can modify the frequency, and we also measure the three components of the magnetic field as a receiver. Uh, this is a diametric diagram, usually transmitting a vertical magnetic moment and measuring the three components of the magnetic field with spacing between 20 meters and 400 meters and frequencies for 100 hertz to 50 kilohertz. 
Now, what are the applications of uh, our equipment, which our customers are making mostly in the marketplace? Uh, of course, geophysics is detecting something into the ground. It can be a resource or it can be a cavity, which usually is not good. A resource is good, like water or like mineral. That's an example uh, in Africa where the method is uh, resistivity imaging is used for detecting faults. This is a nice example with high, very high values of resistivity to an basement and the conductive fault showing where we can put the borehole to try to find water. That's an example in the environmental field uh, where we uh, try to detect the uh, lateral and vertical resol uh, resolution, not uh, lateral situation of a disposal area, which is usually very conductive because of the conductive lixiviate with high temperature and with salinity. An example of resistivity imaging in uh, Brazil for mineral exploration for detecting uh, dike, which appear to be conductive there very clearly among more resistive rocks. That's uh, in Africa where a company, a cement factory, uh, bought an equipment for trying to know where was the limestone, uh, what was uh, the uh, overburden, uh, how thick was the overburden, which here is lateritic fields. Laterite, laterite is very conductive, like clay, limestone uh, appear as resistive, so we can follow by measuring and inverting the resistivity section, we can follow the depth of uh, the limestone, which is very important for the factory to know if they will exploit the limestone or if they will uh, go to another place, because the limestone would be too deep. 3D measurements are possible as soon as you have uh, enough measurements. Uh, nice thing is you can uh, get a 3D image for more clearly understanding uh, what is your structure. Also, 4D is uh, available for uh, repeating sequence of um, measurements. Uh, this is for a bioreactor uh, where there is an injection of lixiviate and we can clearly follow with time where does the lixiviate goes to know uh, where the bioreactor will be uh, more efficient. So the, it's uh, a way, you know, when working in those type of uh, um, sites, you are not allowed to make a new borehole. You, know, you cannot know exactly what is inside except if you can measure from the surface and try to follow up what is happening inside uh, the bioreactor. This method is also applicable for uh, detection of what is under the sea uh, with certain depths of investigation. We are using current up to 50 hemp uh, to be able to uh, go through the highly highly conductive uh, seawater. Induced polarization, an example of uh, both conductive dike and polarizable, which correspond to sulfide and gold. This was obtained with 20 meter spacing by one of our customers working for a mining company. 20 meter spacing dipole dipole, but five meters shift to increase the lateral resolution. Uh, for groundwater, uh, this is an example of mag magnetic resonance sounding in Mongolia. Uh, for detecting water in a site in the desert Gobi for a mining company. You know, mining companies sometimes need water to exploit their mineral uh, ore body. If they have no water, their uh, ore body has no value. So they need water. In that case, they can pay a big amount of money to know where is the water. And this magnetic resonance system has been used to detect the water and to minimize the number of holes for determining the quantity of water which can be obtained uh, from a sand and a gravel layer which was lying over a clay layer. Another example of magnetic resonance sounding in Chad, where water is uh, not very frequent, uh, for trying to characterize uh, the aquifer, which appears here as the interpretation in the, the blue layer, and showing some uh, good permeability there, and trying to optimize uh, the number of boreholes for uh, supplying water to a refugee camp. Now, that's an example of our electromagnetic system uh, with 50 meters, 100 meters, 200 meters separation to characterize a resistive basement where we see clearly the influence of the spacing on the depth of investigation. All those examples are, have been obtained by our customers when uh, working in the field. So we, uh, as we make training, I will explain that. We can sometimes get data and know what they are doing with, their, with our equipment. 
Now, who are our customers? Uh, basically, this is a breakdown of uh, the type of customers we are using. Basically, we have 50% of our customers which get their money from the states, and 50% which are private money. I would say about 35% in local authorities and state organizations like ministries, 15% universities and research institutes. Why for private? We mostly have a pri small companies, private consultants and contractors for 35% and 15% private companies like mining companies. The most important in the private business, for our equipment at least, is these, uh, the consultants and contractors which are making the work while the big companies are subcontracting to those uh, contractors to get the information on uh, geophysics. So geophysics appears in four, basically four steps. This is a very simple description where first geophysicist has to define which method has to be applied. Then, second, as to go to the field to acquire data, then process, invert, and then, last phase, very important, how to integrate the result of geophysics with other geophys geological information. So we, in our customers, we have small size companies where most stuff is both field and interpretation. While for larger size companies, the experience is basically have a field staff purely dedicated to measurements and logistics, and then interpretation staff, which has to follow, of course, the measurements, but which is in an office, while the field staff is working permanently in the field. And the trend is sending data by email for controlling by a manager, just to be sure that the data is in good quality. Now, a key point I would like to emphasize is the training. We have two types of customers. First type, the best for us, but is experienced users who already know about geophysics. They know much better than we know, and they know perfectly how to use uh, the method, the equipment, the software. So we have very little added value. We don't need to make a training to them. Most of the time, they know everything. While we have an important part, and I would say maybe 50%, who are non-experienced users, which means that they are not geophysicists. They buy an equipment, which is uh, automatic, seemingly op automatic. They buy a software, which is also automatic. So it's very easy for them to believe that buying the equipment and software, they will become a geophysicist just by a few hours training. In reality, we need to try to explain to them how to evaluate the applicability of the method, but we cannot say to explain to them, please go to university and come back in four years. It's very difficult on a commercial point of view. Uh, then uh, we need to help them taking good readings, despite the fact that their equipment are automatic, and then we have to try to know, to let them know about interpretation rules on the equivalence. And most of people are very disappointed when they know that the solution is not unique. But we cannot tell them, don't worry, the equipment is giving the truth. We never tell them. Some example of training. Uh, this is an example in United States. So I think it was Montana State for a company who was working in grounding resistance measurement. In Peru, a university with uh, students working for groundwater with a resistivity system. Uh, Denmark for magnetic resonance for groundwater. Russia, groundwater too. New Caledonia, uh, this is Valenco, famous company for nickel uh, exploration. Mauritania for groundwater. Mauritania again for mining exploration, another team. Eritrea, close to Ethiopia. Uh, for groundwater. Kenya, groundwater too. Emirates for geotechnical works. Uh, they are following uh, for highways uh, or for railways um, layout. They have to determine uh, what is the thickness of uh, the sand or, or of the clay. Bangladesh, the geological survey for groundwater. China uh, for groundwater in Qinghai province. China again for mining exploration. So now, what improvements for the future, uh, both in instrumentation? So first, I would like to, what is the dream of our customers, I guess? I never ask them, but they tell me. So we would like lower weight and smaller size equipment. This is okay. Okay, we, we are trying to. Uh, increase sensitivity, wider dynamic range, so that not to have any problem of measurements and uh, uh, to minimize the problem of quality of readings. A, a trend now, not for ordinary users, but for experienced users, is raw data, time samples. They say, give me the raw data. Don't worry, I will process them. Okay? We, are, we have to try to give them raw data. 
Then they would like many sensors for 3D analysis, but when they discover how many readings they have to make, they say, okay, okay, we will start by 2D. <laughs> because 3D needs so many, we, we, of course we can do 3D, but uh, on an industrial point of view, when you see that uh, you need thousands or tens of thousands of readings, you minimize, you try to optimize or to make some compromise. Then uh, trend, especially in mining exploration, more power for deeper penetration. It is true that as the price of uh, uh, base metals is going up, uh, we really need to go deeper to try to find new ore bodies. And this needs, this requires more power. Then more security for high voltage. This is a trend too. We are using, uh, everybody is using high voltage for, especially for resistivity and IP, up to 3000 volts. It's dangerous voltage and we have to improve as much as possible the risk, to minimize the risk of uh, any accident. And then of course lower price, but this is uh, general trend. Now, for the software, uh, we have two types, as I told you, two types of uh, customers. Experienced users, what they would dream for the software. They want multi-optional programs which permit to them anything with any type of configuration, and they will manage to use it. They will need one week training, but they will manage. While we also have maybe 50% of our users who are non-experienced, and they don't want to be bothered by software. They want something extremely simple, which is uh, able to drive an automatic inversion without asking any question, and giving 2D or 3D image in A4 format for in direct integration to their reports. This is a reality, and they need to go, they sell their data so uh, small amount of money that they need to hurry up in the field. Warning, of course, how to deal with the equivalence when you go so quick. This is a very a real danger. For the methodology, I would like to say that uh, classification of the performance of each geophysical method in relation with target and backgrounds. This is also a dream, but we have to try to help all the community as to try to help uh, people to know uh, for a given target, for a given background, what, is, what are the best methods to use. If there were a catalog somewhere, it would be nice. Uh, then maybe also multi-method inversions, expert systems. This is also some things that uh, theoreticians are working on. To finish, conclusion. What can be uh, the future of our relations between academic structures and industrial structures? I think, of course, academic need to help the uh, commercial and industrial world first to develop new methods because private companies are not always capable of developing new methods and also to establish and control the state-of-the-art tools for applied geophysics. I told you, more and more geophysics is made by non-geophysicists. And we need to be as clear as possible as what can be the rules for saying that they are making good measurements, good readings, and good interpretation. Thank you very much.